Travel Snack Pack. Welcome back to Travel Snacks. If you were just with me on the other live stream, for whatever reason, the chat stopped working, the screen froze, and we got cut off. So now I'm here in my son's house because the connection is better. And I'll just wait for people to show back up so that we can keep it popping. Took me a minute because I had to get all my stuff from the van and come back. Hey, Jacob Wade. Mimi, Jeff and Jenny, Jane. Gina, Monique, hey. Okay, Grant's back. Zachary Dart, hey, how's it going? All right, so as I was mentioning, I don't know what happened. Like the screen and the live screen stream was still going for me, but the chat stopped working for me. And I think on your guys' end, it seems like I was frozen. But for me, I was I could still see myself talking, but the chat just completely, it just said, we can't connect the chat. So I couldn't see what you guys were saying. And then I opened up a pop-out window of the chat and I could see what you guys were saying, and then I saw you guys were saying that I was frozen and then I couldn't reconnect. So that sucks. Grant kept everybody entertained. All right. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Raysa, Abex, glad you got things straightened. Yes. Spectra. Yay. Hey, T dot. You're back. Right. When I think we were going to play games, this gave me time to make popcorn. Awesome. Barbara's here. Felicity. Yay. Okay. Um, we were having a good party already, and I was going to show you guys some things in the van, but too bad. Okay, Mike's back. Uh, I was frozen, but you had a smile. Oh, okay, well, that's positive. Hey, Susan, how are you? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. Or is that we? No, that's French. Grant is a cool dude. Um, okay, so for those of you that are on still right now, um, this was my test to see how my tethering was going to do. And I mentioned a few live streams back that I was using a service called visible, which is my cell phone provider. And then I was going to have to go back to Verizon because of uh, various reasons, but I stuck with visible to see how I would do on the road. And it's been pretty good. But now that I did my first live stream in the van and it didn't stay connected, now I know that I pretty much do need to go back to Verizon. But what's weird is that Visible uses the Verizon tower. So I'm like, why would I pay triple to go back to Verizon if it's the same? But Visible, the service, does say that their, um, their connection speeds are still a little bit like less than Verizon, even though they use the Verizon towers, if that makes sense at all. I don't know. Um, so I'm, I keep going back and forth because visible is so much less expensive, but if Verizon's going to be more consistent, especially when I do these live streams, then I need to go back to Verizon. So this was kind of my test. So I'm kind of bummed because I don't want to pay for Verizon but I think I'm going to have to. Terry, hey, how's it going? Terry, you're right on time. We already were already doing a live stream and it cut out. So this is the second one. Grant the Overseer. Yes, hit the like button again. Does Bob Wells recommend an internet provider that's less expensive? So Bob Wells uses Verizon, and I think he also has a hotspot with AT&T, which I think I'm going to have to do. Also, he uses a MoFi or a – it's like this like this box that has like, like four antennas off of it. And, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much that is, but – I already spent all the money to buy that antenna in my van and the antenna that I bought was super expensive, but it doesn't work with visible. So it does work with Verizon. So if I would have had Verizon right now and I would have been in my van, I probably could have connected my antenna that's on the van and probably got a stronger signal. 
and probably could have stayed connected. But since visible doesn't work with any boosters, that's the other reason. So I don't know. Yeah, so I think I like oh, some of the van life people, they use multiple services, but it is expensive. But if you think about like if that is one of my biggest expenses compared to like having a mortgage or rent or whatever, then I don't mind spending a little bit to have a strong connection because I hate when these live streams cut out because we had like 70 people in here having a nice little party and now we lost like 40 of them already. So that sucks. So I need to keep doing these tests to make sure that like what works best because I want to be out doing things and showing you guys where I'm at. So I don't know. So good to be, uh, to we meet up with snack friends. You all are such a blessed group. Yes, indeed. Um, like straight talk, you're the last person to get service on the Verizon towers. Mm. Yeah. Uh, hey, Linda Vance from Florida. How are you loving your van? I love it. I think it's great. Uh, you have straight talk. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like visible is a good service. It's not that it's bad. It, and it's only like 35 bucks a month total unlimited, but you get, it's not that you're getting throttled. It's just that you're getting like the less of the towers, if that makes sense. Hey, Mike Lucas, how are you? Hey, Danielle. Hey, all you need is 5G cell phone with unlimited service and tether. I do need to get another cell phone too, because I've had my same iPhone eight for like four years. Sounds like a router for Wi-Fi. Yes. I remember his video on the different internet providers. There were three or four. Yes. I heard Verizon is better than AT&T, which I had, and they are a rip off. Yeah. I had Verizon prior to this and they are a rip off, but their service is pretty good. Two sisters in a cocktail. Ivana's in the house. Ivana, I've been meaning to call you to talk about some things, but maybe later. It's your only form of communication. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's my only form of communication. And like having a strong connection, a strong signal, uh, and especially for my live streams with you guys, it's really important. So if that's what I need to put my money into, that's what I'm going to do. But that's really the reason why I decided to do this today, trying it in my van outside so that if this happened, I could come in here and I can figure it out before next Saturday. Your gas tank issue sounds like it may be your filler tube. Do a Google search van. Okay. Let me get my notebook. Open my live chat notes. Um, get van gas filler tube. Van gas filler tube. Okay. Thank you. Um, hope everybody's doing well. We're doing well. How are you, Ivana? Soon 5G internet will be lost my place. Everywhere for free. Oh, that's good. I think, unless it gives us radiation. Um, Terry, uh, before I read all these comments, Terry, uh, I think you might be the winner with the comments about my, um, my cabinet issue. If you guys haven't already, go watch the video I just posted about uh, installing my cabinets. And I couldn't figure out what was the best course of action to keep my um, cabinet that's under my bed closed. And I love your idea, Terry, about the like sticking a dowel with like a pin or whatever, or, like drilling in the side. I didn't even ever think to do that, but that's a very smart idea. And I'm thinking like maybe I could get like not an Allen wrench, but you know how an Allen wrench is like a L. Maybe I can get a bolt that's like an L shape and maybe that's what you were talking about, but drilling a hole into the side of both um, the drawer and the cabinet frame and then sticking the little like L shaped pin in there so that it can't move. It's so smart because I really was trying to avoid bungees and this seems like a good idea because it'll stay in there. The pin will stay in there and then when I stop, I can just pull it out and put it in the drawer just as, as long as I remember to put it back when I start driving it again. But I love that idea, Terry. So thank you very much. A lot of you had some good ideas as well. And those will be my backup ideas. And also, I love that you guys made a lot of comments because it's going to help a lot of other people. 
I also had some marine latches. Some people were talking about marine latches. I do have a set of marine latches, but the way that I needed to install them didn't have enough room on the side. So that might be a solution that I could maybe work out, but I couldn't this first time. Uh, okay, Linda Vance, what's the temperature in Florida? Take two, glad I got to join you. Wasn't sure when you do this. Oh, gl I'm glad you're here. Hey, Matthew Gibbs, how are you? Um, Verizon is the best, I think. I have T-Mobile, yeah. So Verizon is supposedly the best. I had Verizon before when I was in my car and there were still pockets where I couldn't get a solid connection and I would call them and I'd be like, you guys are charging me so much. You guys should be working everywhere. And I think it's just like, you have to maybe have a combination of services. Like I think I'm gonna obviously get Verizon and then I think I'm gonna get uh, like a, a MiFi, like a little portable thing with AT&T just in case one doesn't work, then I can switch over to the other, but I got to do a little research. Um, I'd stick with Verizon, go live more often, and oh, lost my place. And we can all pitch in to help with cost. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fine. It's it's important to me to do that. So, yes. Hey, TJ, how are you? How much solar do I have? I have three 100 watt solar panels, so 300 watts. Oh, we get to hear your secret. Yes, <laughs> I was wondering if anybody was gonna remember from last week. Uh, I do have a secret that I'm gonna talk about closer to the end of the live stream. Better than a car payment and mortgage. Facts, Felicity, and that's what I'm saying. Have you had any issues keeping the fridge cold on the solar? I'm taking notes. None. Um, I still don't know how to like work my, like, I don't know how to read the solar stuff, but, um, so far the fridge is the only thing that I've really powered. Sometimes I plug in my computer to recharge it. Um, but my battery, oh, I can't do it in here. Dang. So Renogy, the company that I, um, got the solar from, they have, they have an app. They had an app called Renogy BT. And then like around the time that I got into my van, they were like, oh, we have a brand new app that's better. So I downloaded it. It's called DC home. So it's like right here. DC, you probably can't see that, DC Home. So I was using DC Home and it never told me anything like that I could really understand. So I downloaded the first app, Renogy BT, and it does tell me like the battery capacity, which is the only thing I really need to know, like how much am I drained? And so that's been helpful. I only learned about that this week. So, so far my refrigerator doesn't really suck that much power out of the battery. So it stayed on this whole time and I haven't even really done anything different. So I think the 300 Watts is enough, but one of the things I'm going to make some videos in the future about like things I'm learning just right away. I have to remind myself to always park in the sun. I'm so used to like trying to be stealth and parking under a tree or parking in a like parking space. That's like further back or whatever. And it's like, that's not smart and useful in a van because you have to, be where the sun can hit your solar. So I have to keep reminding myself, no, you need to be out where the sun is hitting your solar. So that's one tip that I can give. Um, it's in the mid sixties today in Florida. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, TJ, you're Terry also. And we also have Terry is tenacious too. We have three Terry's on here. 170 years ago, Allison's ancestors were trying to communicate with smoke sickles uh, on the Oregon Trail and it would rain. <laughs> oh, dang. Sounds about right. How do you like your new van? Did you sleep in it yet? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let me just read these comments real quick. Apparently my duct tape or bungees was not a good idea. <laughs> no, there was a lot of good ideas. And actually I was going to go with bungees. Uh, I was going to take the bungee from ver like the very behind of the cabinet and just take it around. Um, because bungees are good, but I really don't really want to have just like the bungees all over the place. I'd like to have more of a permanent solution. Um, so I don't know. But yes, I mean, duct tape's still a good, legit thing. I tried to find your Newlywed Game video on YouTube. No luck. I know, Jane. I don't think it's anywhere because I, like, probably in the last couple months, I was like, I wonder if 
people could search that and find that. And I even searched looking for that episode and I couldn't find it anywhere. So good luck to anybody finding it. I do have it on a VHS cassette tape, which I recently transferred onto a, like into my computer. Um, so maybe one day I'll release it. It'll be like a special subscription or something. Not that it's anything exciting, but I got to keep a couple things for like the, the snack pack people, the crew. Um, my go-to Wi-Fi when I lived in my car was the McDonald's parking lot. That's one that I used to use all the time, David, when I was in my car. Because in a car, it's different because you can park right in front of like the Walmart. I mean, not the Walmart, but the McDonald's or Starbucks. And in my van, it's not stealth. Like, sometimes the spots are like compact spots, and I can't really do that. Um, but you could do that if you're in a car. They never failed me yet. I have unlimited with AT&T and pay 65 a month for unlimited talk, text, and data. So Jacob, when you have unlimited with any service, whether it's AT&T, Verizon, or anything, it's not true unlimited. They throttle you after a certain amount of gigs. And especially if you're tethering, it, that's a separate thing altogether. So like on Verizon, I had unlimited, but if you hit 15 gigs of tethered um, connection, they throttle you to like 2G, which is unusable. It's literally unusable. Um, so when I was in my car, I ended up paying like for the most highest unlimited plan they had so that I could get like, I don't know, I'm just making it up like 30 or 40 gigs of tethered uh, data, which is pretty expensive. Um, but, and there was times where Verizon still wasn't like connected. I was like, why am I paying so much? And that's why I tried visible. I'm not saying visible is bad. I'm just saying for somebody that's like main form of like making a living is communicating with videos and stuff and live streams. Visible is not good enough. It's just not good enough. And plus it doesn't work in Canada and I plan to go to Canada at some point. So no, uh, food show. <laughs> We're going to talk about the secret show. It, a little bit later. T-Mobile is expensive. Fifty dollars for unlimited everything. Have to be fifty though. Fifty for fifty. Oh, I'm close. I only have three more years. Is it like true unlimited though? Yes. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you very much. Um, that is called a cotter pin. Okay, I'm writing this down. Cotter pin. That's what I need to know. Cause I was thinking of like an Allen wrench or like, you know, some kind of an L bolt, but cotter pin, that's, that's good to know. Um, Lowe's or tractor supply will have it. So all you will have to do is drill holes. Felicity had the same. Idea. Okay, cool. So I have a drill that I bought at Walmart, just like a cheap drill. So I just need to buy a drill bit. And I, I would imagine I would just drill the hole pretty much to the exact size because you want to be snug, right? That's what I'm thinking or just like a tiny bit bigger. Cause I don't want it to be like rattling if the hole is too big and it like starts to rattle out as I drive. But yeah, I think that's what you're saying. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts with Wi-Fi also. See in California, there wasn't a lot of Dunkin' Donuts. So I didn't really ever consider that. Um, yeah, Starbucks for sure. I guess T-Mobile's looks less expensive. Let's see. The agriculture one has a ring on the end of it that bends down to lock in, uh, it in place. Ooh, I like that idea. I like that idea. Um, agriculture one. Uh, PBR Doug, gas tank problem could be a clogged vent tube. Uh, it usually has a screen over the end that can be get blocked and pushes the gas back out of the fill hole. Okay, so clogged vent tube. I think that's what um, Jack Skelton was saying. Clogged vent tube. I'm just writing all of it down so that I can investigate later. Are you considering getting a drone in the future? We kind of talked about this in the past. I'm going to have to close these shades. Hold, please, because this is like right in my eye. Put on the light while I'm at it. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm back. Okay. Um, I would like to get a drone in the future, but it's not a priority because it is pretty costly. Um, and the one that I want is the one that like, it has this remote control. I mean, they all do, but it's like a tracker. Like it tracks you, it tracks like the beacon. So you could actually have it flying above your van or your car as you drive and you don't have to even be like controlling it. So it kind of follows the beacon. And so I would love to get something like that in the future to like spice up the videos, but it's pretty costly and I've spent a grip of money on building this van. So I'm trying to like <laughs> recoup some of the money I spent um, before I start making big purchases. So for now I will not be getting a drone, but I'm maybe next year or if I come into like a lot of money or if this channel just blows up and I start <laughs> getting like mad sponsors or fat stacks of cash somehow, maybe. Thanks TJ. Um, get a sun sticker or a sun plushie to put in the front of the car. So when you park, you have it. Oh, that's a good idea. I actually like that idea. Sun sticker. Cute. I like that. Want to know about the secret with the secret. <laughs> Bunches are great till you snap in your face. Oh yeah, that sucks. I haven't had one snap in my face, but I've had it snap on my like arm or wrist or whatever, and that hurts. Bungees also, though, double as exercise tools, toning. That's a good idea, Barbara. That's a good idea. I do need to get some bungees because every van life person's like, bungees are your best friend. And so I do need to get a few bungees just to have, because you never know when things are gonna like fall apart. Or if you add something to the van, if you need to get something like bags of groceries or whatever, you can always bungee those things down. So yeah, I do need to have some of those. Found a great small plug-in heater that heats up small areas by brilliant light. Ooh, awesome. Come to Washington, Washington State or DC? Um, what about a hasp latch? Okay, what is a hasp latch? Let me see. I'm gonna look it up real quick. Hasp latch, let's see. Hasp latch, let's see. Okay, so I looked at this like ha ha hasp latch. Um, but the one that I'm looking at, you have to put a padlock on it, unless you're talking about something different. And I don't wanna have to padlock every time I park the car, I mean, park the van, then take the padlock off and open the drawer. I want something that's like just really quick and easy. So like bungees is good or like, you know, like the pin that Terry and Felicity are talking about. Um, but I'm looking at this other thing, but I don't know. I'll have to keep looking, but yeah, I like that idea as well. I second the Terry, you mean the real Washington in the Pacific Northwest, the other Washington is not for real. Now they lower it to 2G. Yes, 2G is just dumb. They shouldn't even be allowed to, to like throttle you to 2G. Um, oh yes, True Unlimited. Ooh, that's awesome, Danielle. Okay, well, three years from now, I'll be hitting that up. What about Mint Mobile? Ryan Reynolds is really pushing it. I've never tried it. I don't know, like I'm okay with trying other things as long as um, they don't throttle you, and most of them do. Yeah, Renogy is good. Hey, Randy Russell, how are you? Um, hey, Ellie Busy in London. How's it going? Welcome back, Cotter Pin. Hilarious, Mike Brady. Thank you guys have cheap cell phone service. I pay $192 a month for two phones with 13 gigabytes. <gasps> Shared between us. Yeah, that's way too expensive. I think I was paying like, see, it's hard because I it was me and Marcus on a plan. And I feel like we were paying like $200 for two phones. But that could have included paying for the phones too. And I can't remember. Can't remember. But I think it was roughly 180 or something like that for two phones. And we had unlimited, but it was not true unlimited. Light like you. <laughs> hey, Jan M. I would drill while drill while about the same, a hole about the same size. It will get where with time. Okay, okay, about the same size. Um, buy it at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is cheaper, okay. Yeah, I've been like starting to, to dig Harbor Freight a lot more. 
I remember it was like it was yesterday. That's kind of scary. More scary would be not remembering things. I guess that comes later in life. True. I should, should I switch from an Android that's ancient to an iPhone? This is part of my comment above. This is, that's a, a question that people have been fighting about like as strong as politics with Android and iPhone. I think it's a personal preference. I've tried an Android before and I just can't get down with it. Like I'm not opposed to Androids. I just, I don't find it intuitive, but there's, there's some great things on Android phones that iPhones don't have. Um, plus I have a MacBook computer and I have, um, I guess that's it. I used to have an iPod, but that's old news. Um, so they kind of talk to each other, if that makes sense. And so I kind of like that. But, you know, I'm kind of over Apple as well because all their stuff is so expensive. But that's just a whole nother side note. But I do like the iPhone. I will say I do like the iPhone. It's pretty easy to use. Um, hey, Teresa Woods, uh, you just recently found. Welcome to the Snack Pack. Thank you for being here. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, C. Webb from middle of Georgia. Awesome. I love Georgia. I'll be going to Georgia at some point soon-ish. How do you eat all those snacks and stay so skinny? <laughs> I'm not skinny, but thank you. Uh, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm definitely like filling out again. Like I had lost like 12 pounds eating more of a plant-based diet when I was building the van. And then I went off the deep end and this week especially. So I might look especially puffy right now. Uh, but I need to get organized in the van because I don't know where things are to start cooking. Like everything's everywhere. So that's on my notes to talk about is basically, uh, well, let's just dive into this. I'm talking about tacos. So Texas has a lot of taco places, like so many, like I thought California had a lot of Mexican food, but Texas has so much and it's like Tex-Mex, but they have a lot of queso and tacos and burritos. And so I haven't had Taco Cabana on this trip, but I have had Taco Cabana before and it's pretty good. Um, I did have Taco Bell here, which I'm sure everybody's had Taco Bell, which is good. But then I had my first experience with Taco Bueno. It was delicious. It's like somebody like left a comment was like, Taco Bueno is what Taco Bell could only hope to be. And I second that. I, I think their food is delicious. And I've had Taco Bueno twice in the last week. I've had McDonald's. It's been a bad week for eating, but I appreciate your comment. Um, and I've also been trying to walk. Um, my goal is to walk at least a mile a day. Um, I didn't do it yesterday because I was trying to finish editing the video. Um, I don't know if I walked a mile today or not. I did walk, but I don't know if it was a full mile. And then the day before I did walk a mile, so I don't know. It's not a lot, but at least it keeps me active. Um, have you guys had Taco Bueno? For those of you that are in the States. And if so, what do you like about Taco Bueno? And do you like, do you love it? Because I had their party nachos, which is just refried beans and queso. It's delicious. And also I had their little um, bean and cheese burrito, also delicious. Basically I like their, the flavor of their beans. Um, I say secret was either a singing a jingle, be an extra in a movie or TV show or singing for a commercial. That is very sweet, but it's none of those things. When we get to that part of today's live chat, I'm going to ask for, uh, to ask you guys what you think it is. Unstoppable Morgan got a drone and posted today. She was super excited. Must. Okay. I like her channel. She's got a great channel. Um, it is very exciting to have a drone but I would definitely go to drone school or whatever, like on online drone school, because I feel like I'm not that coordinated with stuff like that. So I want to make sure I don't break my drone first thing. So that'll be a nice day when I get a drone, but it's not going to be anytime soon. I don't think. Hey, Al G, how are you? Uh, Grant thinks it's to be an extra in a movie or TV show. Uh, Tanya, I bought a drone for my son and it took us a year to even get flying. It was, oops, lost my place. Whoa. Oh man, I have scroll back. I need to keep, I need to talk faster because there's a lot of comments. It was hopeless. He finally got the hang of it and crashed it. Dang, that's how I feel I'd be too. 
Um, hey, Paul Kepler, love your videos. You'd be safe with it. Thank you so much. Um, could use a barrel bolt to latch the drawer. Okay, barrel bolt. I'm writing things down. Because I want to make sure it's secure. Um, her secret was that she spent years co-hosting a talk show with Regis. Nobody remembers because Regis wouldn't stop talking and allows to say a thing. Aw, rip. Rest in peace, Regis. Has blatch with water pen. Okay. I'm going to look into that. Okay. Um, they have a turnkey latch. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about, those turnkey latches, but do they like at an L? Because that's the way would need to be held. Um, uh, sorry, you have to go. Bye, Mike Lucas. Thank you for coming along. I use track phone and pay for three months at a time. Breaks down to seven dollars a month or twenty dollars for three months. Includes text, talk, text, talk, and data. Oh, awesome. Um, Ellie says, "How's it going? I got my COVID test results today. Yo, positive. That's a bummer. I'm getting an alert." It's first of all telling me I my live stream started and then there's another one that says the second live stream started. So thanks YouTube. Um, but oh Monique, thank you so much. Ten dollars for Monique. Very generous. Thank you, Monique. I don't even know if I got to see with all the disconnect where you are. But I'm gonna give you let's give you party guy. Thank you so much, Monique. You are a true blessing. Thank you so much. There was another um, alert. Whoa, Deborah Kennedy, Debbie, Debbie Kennedy. $20. Oh, on Venmo. Cool. Thank you. Gas or tacos or pizza. Bam. I will use it for that, those things. Thank you so much, Debbie. Let me give you a shout. Um, let's give you a... Uh, Let's give you this one. This is a fun one. That wasn't very loud. Yay. Thank you so much, everybody, for the donations. It's truly appreciated. And I will use it for gas and snacks, for sure. Um... Did you know that the stimulus that passed included bull, includes free broadband for all? I didn't hear about that. I never got a stimulus, P.S. Um, I just got a van and doing the same thing as you. Oh, awesome. What kind of van did you get, Paul? Um, Danielle, it's an iPhone 8. Yeah, I have the iPhone 8 Plus, and I like it. I've had it for like four years, and so far I like it. Um, yes, prayers for uh, anyone that's ill or having any sickness because it's a lot going on out there. Apple is great at mind control. True. Do you know how many miles per gallon you are getting? I don't know. I'm going to like have to figure that out as I drive more. Uh, hey, Allison, when are you coming to Florida? Um, hey, Shang, I'm going to try to shoot for Florida like next month or in March. So I'll let you know. But stay, stay tuned on these live streams and I'll Make sure that everybody knows kind of like what direction I'm going. I'm a reseller on eBay. Danny girl, vintage, need a phone that can take good pics and more storage. Oh, awesome. Um, I, I like, I'm, when I get a new phone, I'm going to get the iPhone 11, not the 12, because that's more expensive. The iPhone 11 Pro Max, I don't know what the price is now, but it's supposed to take like really great pictures. Android versus iPhone. I grew up on a Windows machine, so Android makes more sense. I find iPhone too restrictive and locked down. I like to tinker. Yes. Uh, hey, ES, I owned a 2016 Ram ProMaster. I know will never, ever own a van again. I find that I can live in a car, regular car, just fine. Just be a minimalist, save a lot of fuel and cost in general. I have a lot to say about that, ES, because I've been since I've been in the van, I was like, you know what? A car, nobody should put down living in a car because I, there's a lot of good things that I loved about living in the car as opposed to this van. There's also a lot of great things about living in this van. And I'm going to make a full video about my thoughts about this. But just for this live stream to keep it moving along, 
I kind of agree with you on that. Like I, I do enjoy my van. I'm glad I did it and I'm glad I have it, but I really loved living in my car as well. <laughs> if I had a toilet in my car, I might just get like car living, you know, back to doing that. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. Dive in girl. Okay. iPhone is a bit simpler though. Yes. I also learned to hand wash clothes with vinegar and a bucket only need to own a few pairs of clothes. That's true. I need to get rid of more of my clothes because I brought way too much. Um, Texas used to be part of Mexico. I love Mexican. Yes. I love Mexican food. Hey, hey, Chris Scott. How you doing? No, but we got just got a taco landia. I never heard of that. It's new. Haven't tried it yet. Mm. I eat at Chipotle a lot. I don't trust fast food joints. Some guy might squirt a lot of hand sanitizer in my food. Um, I can't eat Chipotle. Everything on their menu is spicy to me. I've tried all the things and I don't know what it is, what they put in there, but it's some kind of spice. I don't know. Um, hey, Scotty Richard Studio. Taco Cabana was better 20 years ago before when Oh, maybe that's the thing. I like Taco Cabana okay, but it didn't like thrill me. Um, them working that low pay job already raises eyebrow of what kind of person it may be. Um, I worked at Taco Bueno back in 1980. Uh, hey, Dwayne. Um, did you love it? Monique, Ellie, hope you get better soon. I also testify. Oh, you did, Monique? Are you in your car still? Um, it's hard to mess up tacos. No, it's not. Sometimes the beans are flavorless. And sometimes the shell is too hard and crispy. Sometimes it's too like wiggly. You can mess up a taco. Don't even get me wrong. Cause I am a taco connoisseur. <laughs> so you could definitely mess up a taco, but some tacos are better than others. I've never had Taco Bell or Taco Bueno. Oh, Felicity. This is a challenge. You've got to try one of those soon. Photography and nature with Rebecca just started watching you recently. Just finished watching your Vancouver videos. Thank God you were not mauled by a bear. True. And thank you for watching. And thank you for being here. Um, okay. Cred, not only do I stink it, would you rather, I can't guess secrets. This is a pretty off the wall one, which you'll know in a second. So I won't, wouldn't feel too bad about that. What job better to murder a lot of people than working in fast food, squirting hand sanitizer on people's food? I trust eating food there. That's pretty dark. I don't trust eating food there. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could say that for any place. They make flying a drone really easy. Actually flies itself. Interesting. Taco Bell used to only have six items on the menu for 29 cents each. And I remember around 1967. And it was all outdoor seating around a natural gas field firing. If you guys want to know a little fun fact, my parents met at Taco Bell and they're married over 50 years. Taco Bell holds a special place in my heart, even though they've messed up their menu recently. But anyways, Taco Bell, it's all good. All of that long gone, too much liability with a fire pit. That's true. But fire pit's a nice little vibe. Monique, you're feeling better. Okay, that's good. Do you use a microwave in the van too? I don't use a microwave. I've thought about it, but I think it's going to take up too much space. Um, I think I'm just going to try to use my Instapot and my induction cooktop. But you never know. I'm not going to say never. Hey, Mark Parrish, try some Johnny Cole YouTube videos from the black country England if MSM Media gets you down when chips fry class cover. I don't know what any of that means, but is that music? <laughs> I don't know. Glad Monique, okay, that's good. I might consider a van life in the future, but I don't know how it works here. In the I don't know either, but I'd like to know in terms of sleeping on the road. Yeah, let us know if you find out. Apparently, I would have to go to Arkansas for Taco Bueno. Oh, dang. Uh, let's see. Before you peace out, slap that like button and thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Fake Freedom. Uh, okay, you want pizza, AGT? Um, gas or taco... Tacos or pizza, it's all the same thing, right? I mean, um, oops, this is supposed to be family friendly. I had pizza last night. I'm guessing 12 miles per gallon. Yeah, maybe about 12, I'd say. But let me do a lot more driving, and then I'll, like, figure that out. I did also, let's see, da, 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 da. pizza would be nice to have spinning instead of that annoying arrow spinning with a live stream. That's true. We should have a pizza spinner. 
Hey, PBR Doug, thank you for the 20. Home Depot, Home Depot has L-shaped barrel bolt latches. Awesome. That's what I'm going to use that donation for. Thank you so, so much. What a generous donation. Let me give you uh, this one. It shoots. He scores! Woo! <laughs> Thank you so much, PBR Doug. I truly appreciate that. And I will be looking out for those bolts. And I need to get some drill bits. And I'll let you guys know. I'll, like, next time I do a live stream, I should be in my van. And I should be able to show you what, how I've secured that. So that's going to be... It's going to be what's up. Uh, Allison, I read that induction cooktop takes a lot of water. You might be better with the butane stove. Yeah, that's true. I haven't tried the um, induction. Um, I tried it one time when I was still building the van, and it kind of didn't – it took too much energy. But I'm going to try it again. And if it's not going to work, I'm just going to leave it here at my son's house and go with the butane. So I'll let you guys know how it goes. Um, my daughter-in-law paid – 1200 for an iPhone 8. Feel guilty if I don't use it. Oh, dang. I mean, resell it if you don't want. Don't use something you don't want. That's my thing. You know, even if it's a gift, I know you could feel bad, but also, like, you, a phone is something we use all the time. So get something that you love and you love using because, you know, you don't want to have something that's that you're not happy with. I made a folding compost for the Jeep. Ooh. That's interesting. I'd like to know what that looks like. Chipotle puts cilantro in their white rice. Yeah, I'm not a fan of cilantro either. Um, oh, I love Chipotle steak salad with black beans. The dressing is a delicious vinaigrette. I want to love Chipotle. Don't get me wrong. I've tried it several times, but I don't know what it is, but everything's so spicy. Makes my nose run. Funny, I saw a, different, saw a vid different from this topic, and the person talked down on van life saying that van life are people who don't want responsibility. I thought, but the money you could save. I mean, it's a personal preference. I say live how you want to live. I don't even get into all that. Like if people love living in a car or tent or van or truck, do it. I think whatever you want to do. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Just saying. Well, welcome. Um, I felt the same at first. Uh, let's see. I cannot do any Mexican food. Cali tacos are the best, though. Yes. I don't know why you can't do Mexican food, though, because it's delicious. Um, oh, yeah, the new drone takes no skill to fly. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm talking about, Dwayne. I forget what it's called, but it's one that, like, it's very easy to use. But I still would like to take some lessons because I don't want to ruin it. It's so expensive. Taco Bell keeps wrapping one food over another. <laughs> that's true, G-Pan 62. They, they keep saying, hey, what can we do to put like a crunchy shell onto a soft shell? And they keep doing weird things. Yes, yeah, still in my car. I started feeling sick in St. Augustine, so I didn't get to do, oh, dang, much. I'm back in Miami, but staying outside of, oh, okay. Well, hopefully you're, you know, you're feeling better and you're not um, in any discomfort. So I'm glad you're recovering nicely, though. And I hope you get to get back to St. Augustine because it was pretty cool. Just started outfitting my car to be able to sleep in it while on photography. Oh, awesome. Um, let's see. My mom and dad were diagnosed with bipolar and schizophrenia, respectively, in their early 20s, spending... Oh, okay, so I don't know what that said, so maybe it was bad. Allison uses her donations to eat. <laughs> Partly. Uh, I use it for mostly for gas. And usually, like, when I start traveling outside of um, Dallas, I'm going to start making the videos and doing more of the traveling things, like um, like visiting places and stuff like that. So that's going to come in handy as well. And also, I still have a lot of things to fix on the van. So actually, to be honest, most of the donations are going to, like, you know, fix things on the van and stuff like that. Hey, meet healthy Lori. How are you doing? Hey, 180 wave nator. I watched the cabinet video today. I'm loving the journey, the highs and lows. Thank you so much. Would love to wrench, love a wrench to continue my support. <laughs> the wrench is for the moderator. So that's um, Grant for now. Hey, that indie girl. How are you? PBR, peanut butter Reese's, yes. 
Cricket phone, wait, what did it say? Cricket phone plan two line unlimited data and talk for 96 a month. But is that true unlimited? Oh, dang, Pakistan. Let's see. Just lost power nationwide. What? That's a big situation. That's a big situation. Some people say cilantro tastes like soap. Yeah, some people do. Like, I've heard that. Um, it doesn't, I don't know what it does. Like, I don't hate cilantro, but I don't love cilantro either. I don't think it tastes like soap to me, though. Tiny dorm sized microwave are about as big as a small toaster oven. Oh, a toaster oven. Mine is a small black and digger. So I had uh, a 700 watt microwave that I tried to install into my car. Didn't work. There was a video about it. Um, and it was pretty good. Like, I could probably get one of those for my van, easily use that in the van, but. Um, I'd have to put it up on the cabinet and that's going to take a lot of my cabinet space. So I'm going to see how I do with other cooking situations first. Two million people without power. What happened? Jeez. That's crazy. Somebody has hijacked my account. Hijacked. Get it? Sorry, bad joke. I don't know what that means. Um... I did send the 20, not the root comment. Okay, good. Hopefully somebody's not hijacking your your account. Hey, Ed P, you going to San Antonio? I don't think so because I've been to San Antonio before, and I think I'm going to end up going to, like, Austin and then probably Louisiana, but I'm not sure yet. Have you run check Have you run check my COVID test? I'm quarantined till my surgery Tuesday. Happy travels, Allison. Oh, have to run. Okay. Um, oh, no, you're having surgery. Um, happy travel to Austin State Safe Take. So thank you. Um, prayers for your recovery for whatever surgery you're going through. Um, Grant is Mr. Goodwrench. Yes, indeed. Yes, he does a great job. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Seems to me that Chipotle always undercooks their rice. Not a fan either. God be with you always. Yes. Um, thank you, Grants. Uh, they aren't saying what happened, but Mexico lost power also. That's scary. It's scary when, like, multiple places are starting to lose power. This seems not good. How did you stretch out to sleep in your car? I'm 5'3", and I would feel cramped if I had to sleep in the car. I had to hook my feet around the front driver's seat, if that makes sense. And it wasn't, like, obviously the most comfortable like a bed, but I slept fine. Um, so I don't know, but five, three, I think you could probably feel comfortable cause I'm five, seven. So five, three, I think I would just be like in heaven. I received a Jackery for my birthday a couple weeks ago. I, I sit in my van and play pretend until I'm ready. Oh, that's so awesome. Felicity. That's awesome. What Jackery did you get? Did you get like the 240, the 500, the thousand? Um, Coleman two burner stove is great. I get about 15 to 25 cooks uses from one tank, uh, for, yeah, I had the Coleman, um, one burner, um, butane and I loved it, but then I decided to send it back because I was like, Oh, I'm just going to use the induction cooktop. So I don't know. I might end up getting it again. Um, oh, okay. The news just broke. Okay. Cool videos. Thank you. Okay. So, um, I'm going to skip over some of these things because we've been talking for quite a while. Um, but I will say that, like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to take one mile walks every day. And one thing I've noticed about Dallas, Texas is there's a lot of great parks. I was one that one this week. Um, what was it called? Something Bonner Park. And it was lovely. And so if you are cooped up in your house, I would just like to remind you to try to get out, even though it's cold. I know some of you are in snow, so don't just don't worry about it but um just try to get out into some fresh air and some like sunshine or at least just fresh air because it really does help like your like your mental capacity especially like being in lockdown and stuff and the world is just going through a lot right now so i wanted to just put out a reminder to get out and take a walk i mean even if it is cold just just do it because I think just sitting in the house can be very depressing and can give you anxiety because you don't get to see like the world. So I wanted to like make sure to talk about that briefly today um, because just the few times that I have gone out for a walk, it just cleared my mental space. So 
try to find like a nearby park or somewhere, even if you walk around like a parking lot or something, I don't know, but try to do it. Um, I'm glad we just bought a generator. Oh yes, definitely. A generator is a great thing to have if you are in a house or if you're in a van too, but it takes up a lot of, a lot more space. Felicity, I got the, um, Jackery 1000 also and did the same thing. Oh, awesome. I have the 242 Felicity. Um, it's, it is not very strong, but it, it'll do a lot of things. Um, I kind of look back, I mean, now I'm in a van, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, I might sell my 240 because I don't, I don't really have a need for it. And I only had it for like two months. So it kind of sucks because it's expensive. But if you're in a position to where you could get a Jackery, um, like anybody that's watching, I would rarely recommend getting like a 500 or a thousand. I know it's expensive, but if you don't have like a, like a solar system with like a battery, like a separate battery, the Jackeries and stuff like that are really good for powering up your things. And a thousand would be probably like the best you could get, I'd say, but they are pretty pricey. So I know it's not in everybody's budget. It wasn't in my budget. So that's why I ended up with the 240. And it did power a few things, so that's not bad. Um, Sheila says, "Wow, that is scary. If major cities, countries lose power, when I move out, moved out of Mexico City years ago, there were 15 million people in the city. Higher now, it is very um, makes you think like what's happening when full countries are losing power. So." Definitely keep it like everybody in your prayers if you are the prayer, praying type. Um, are the videos about road trips or what? So the videos that I'm posting now are all of my van builds and I'm trying to pump them out as fast as I can, but I'm also giving myself a little grace because I'm just trying to like get used to living in the van life because this is actually my real life. Um, so I'm trying to do everything I can to get the videos out. Once I'm done with all those van build videos, they'll all be about um, van life, what's happening, what's really, going on in van life, uh, how I'm surviving with, um, like the pandemic and you know how, like there's a lot of people doing van life, but maybe not talking about how they're getting along with a lot of things closed down. Um, and also I'll be showing like, uh, different restaurants and different adventurous places. So yeah, they will be about road trips and just visiting different places that maybe are off the beaten path. Um, thank you. Weather permitting, I go for a three to four mile walk every day. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. Don't close without the secret. I won't. I have it written down on my notes. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't. Side sleeper here. I could sleep pretty comfortable in the back seat of my Camry by building up the floorboard behind the passenger seat after running it up and putting a lot of pillows to cushion. Yes, I'm a side sleeper as well. So maybe that's also helpful if you sleep in the back of your car. If you ride bikes, Allison, the Dayton, Ohio region has the most bike trails in the U.S. I don't love riding bikes, to be honest, because it hurts my butt. <laughs> Even though I have a big cushion, uh, I don't know why, but, like, maybe I just haven't ridden, ridden, like, a bike that has a good seat. I don't know. That sounds crazy, but um, I don't know. But I do like the trails, especially the I do like the walking trails. So maybe they have some good walking trails as well. Um, let's see. The thousand is awesome and charges everything. It definitely is an investment. It's definitely great if you can get it. The van build videos are helping friends. Thank you. Good. I'm glad that the van build videos are helping. I know some of them could be boring, especially if you're not building a van. So I do recognize that. I also, I also wanted to like punch myself in the face editing this cabinet video. Cause I'm like, this is so boring. I'm so sick of this video, <laughs> but the videos seem to do pretty well, like with views. So I'm like, okay, I guess it's going to help somebody. So I'm glad you guys like the Van Bill videos. I'm really like raring to go about posting like the more travel-y videos, but there are a lot of good videos coming up with the Van Bill, like the plumbing and the electric work and the ceiling and stuff like that. So I want to do like a good job on those videos. So thank you for watching. Reports say National Transmission Dispatch Company tripped and will be hours. Oh, dang. That's crazy. Allison, are we going to do the virtual RTR with Bob Wells? Maybe. When is it? Because I've been meaning to look that up. Let me write this down so I can look it up. Maybe. Because this would be my first time. 
Um, can't wait to see the road trips. Me too. Uh, the stream is back. Did you get disconnected? Finding the right bi bike saddle is key. Maybe that's, I haven't had a, the right bike saddle. I have one rule. I must have beef jerky on my travels. I do like beef jerky, honestly. I don't like to eat meat, but beef jerky, I really like. Van life is... I lost my place. Van life is good relying on non-payments and all that electricity consumption issues and help with a lot of stuff too, yes. Um, I think the build videos are cool because your dad helps out. Yes, that's true too. And it's just like a variety. It's nice to have the van build videos documented for sure. Thanks, Nick B. Yes, tons of parks and walking trails. I don't particularly like riding bikes either due to not being able to find anything but child size bikes since I am so short. Oh, how do you find work? I just do YouTube and it's like I get the ad revenue from the videos um, and I get generous donations from viewers like, like you. That sounds like such a commercial like PBS. Um, and it's not like a whole bunch of money. It's not like a full time job money, but it's enough to keep like gas and food, you know, that's like, I'm, I'm a simple girl. I don't need a lot. Um, is a lot close wanting to travel to Florida for some warmer weather. I'm not in Florida right now, so I can't speak on Florida, but out here in Texas, it seems like semi normal. Like you can go sit in restaurants and eat. You can go into stores, you can park places and go to parks. And I don't know, so far I haven't had any like super challenges with that, except for just wearing a mask. Welcome back, Barbara. Read me like a book at Grand. <laughs> I'm packing up the Jeep and heading to the R chair. Oh, really? I would like to hear about that, Chris. I love your videos, builds, and tours. You're informative and hilarious. Oh, good. I'm glad. It's like you never know. You know, when you're making these videos and I'm editing, I'm like, you know, it's just like with anybody's job. You, you do your job and you just focus on it and you do the best you can. <laughs> but you're like, does anybody care about this? And so I'm glad you guys care about the videos because I really do try to put some good efforts into it. I just got cut up with your videos. Love how you explained everything. And yesterday dad is a genius. Yes. He has a lot of good like MacGyver tricks, which I'm so glad I learned. I'm knee deep in snow stuck in Colorado. Van will be registered by the end of the month. Then I hope to get, Oh, awesome. I'm so glad, but sorry about all the snow. I think Archer is virtual this year instead of Quartzsite, Arizona. He didn't want to hold it in person. That's what I heard too. I heard it's virtual. So Chris, I'd like to know, like, are you, is there like a real live RTR? Let me know. David says, I love your channel. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Hey, AJ Williams. How are you? May God help you in a lot of stuff that you want to archive and may the van be road a road mansion. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm just finishing up. Oops. I missed the comment. Oh, Chris says you'll be, you'll be surprised at how many will actually be there. So is this like a separate RTR that Bob Wells is not like sponsoring? This RTR that we're talking about is like this, it's not a convention, but it's like, it's, like a gathering for like van life and mobile people. And so it's usually in Arizona and because of COVID, you know, the person that puts it on Bob Wells, his channel is cheap RV living, which is a great channel. Um, he said he wasn't going to do one in person, which is what I heard also, but maybe people are just like, you know what, we're still going to do it. So I don't know. Um, let's see. I've heard several say that they are both, they're already and going to be there. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm not going back to Arizona for sure, but maybe I'll do the virtual one. Wandering Willow Blossom. Our chair starts on the 14th on the Howa YouTube channel. Okay. I'm going to write that down. 14th. Meetup for van peeps. Yes. The hardest part about van life is being kicked out of parking lots, which when BLM land is not close. Yes. Um, I've only been kicked out of Walmart parking lots. So Walmart can suck it. I mean, I go to Walmart a lot to buy stuff. So they, I mean, I shouldn't say that, but also don't be stingy with your parking lots. Um, some people are doing unofficial meetups. Okay. 
Yes, it's just those who are on the road at the time anyways, but yes, Bob, yes, okay, I got it. I heard it was virtual, but he said where he was going to be and at what time in the month, okay. Uh, yay to the nomads, January 14th through 20th. Okay, to the 20th, so that's pretty cool. Um, come up to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I probably will, I'm trying to get everywhere. Don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you so much, Barbara. Um, sad that Walmarts are not allowing overnights, I know. There was a scene of Bob Wells, RTR, and Nomad Lad. I've been trying to like get the time to watch Nomad Land, and I have it on my list. Bob has a video about all the plans. The seminars are virtual, and he is inviting folks to come camping so BLM won't charge for oh liability. Don't worry, you make the videos funny. Okay, good. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm working on my next video, which is going to be about the sink and the countertops. So that's going to be coming out. I'm going to say tomorrow, but probably Monday, realistically, because tomorrow I need to, um, since I'm still at my son's in my son's area, I need to um, make my window coverings for the van because um, it's cold. And I need window coverings, and I had some stuff shipped here to his house so that I can make the window coverings. And so that's my plan for tomorrow is to make all the window coverings, which it takes quite a while to make because you got to like put all of it together and put material over it and secure it and stuff like that. And also, I want to organize some things in the van, so I won't probably get a lot of editing time. I'll try to put one out tomorrow, but probably the video is probably going to post on Monday. Okay, so let's talk about a secret. How about that? But let me read these comments real fast. Let's see. Bob has a video. Okay, so that um, 16,400 subs. Yes, I love all the snack pack. We are growing. We're still continuing to grow, and it's been so wonderful to get to know so many of you. Do you have a video or suggestion for places to park overnight? For road trips this is the reason i haven't done this yet yes i do have a video check it out um it wasn't even that long ago probably a few months ago so yeah check that out um my favorite place to park is in hotel parking lots that don't charge for parking which is what i've been doing this whole week um i've been in my van this whole week and every night i've parked in a different hotel parking lot and i haven't had any troubles how big is your van in the inside mm. I don't know the like the I think it's like I think when I was measuring it was like 10 feet by six feet like six feet wide in some areas four feet wide in others and then 10 feet long on the inside like where the living thing is um, if that's helpful places other than truck stops. yeah I haven't even stayed at any truck stops I'm not opposed to doing it, but I heard they're loud. So I've just been doing hotel lots and neighborhoods are my second favorite. I'm building my van out. Your videos are coming out as I need them. Oh, good. Well, that's great to know. I'm glad that that's helpful. My dad always had his dog in the car and, and the time he spends cleaning is incredible. Oh, just being here at my son's house with his dog, his dog sheds like crazy. So I know I couldn't do it. I can't. No, I just, I can't. Not to be negative, but I think eventually they will make van life against the law. Um, I'm not saying they won't, but I'm going to pray that they don't and that more van life people will, you know, step up and we can maybe make some laws the other way that people should be able to live in their cars. Don't even get me started on that topic because I'm very strong about that. But people should be able to live in their vehicles if they want. Okay, secret. You guys ready? <laughs> Everyone's like, secret. Uh, come on, Austin. What's the secret? Are we supposed to guess? Best community on YouTube? Yes. Uh, been waiting a week. You guys are troopers for waiting. Uh, Terry already tried. You're easily avoiding the secret. Do you sell? Did you sell your feet pics? No, I did. <laughs> the secret is not that I sold feet pics. Although low key people keep reaching out to me asking me if I'll sell the pics. I'm like, no. Did you not watch the video? Um, this secret is not even that big. Like, I'm sorry if it's such a big hype, but. Um, yes, he will, he will do the RTR this year. I've been following Bob Wells. For, okay, awesome. They're going to crack down on the camping and parking. They definitely are going to be cracking down on this, but hopefully we can, we can, you know, 
kind of fight back against it a little bit. Allison isn't into foot fetish, but fettuccine is a different subject. That's funny, but I got it like fettuccine. The secret is that it isn't that big a secret. There you go. Now we've talked about it. Okay, so let's see. For those of you watching, uh, so let's see how we, this is my drink from last night. Okay, so last week at the end of the live stream, I don't even know how we got on topic of this, but I don't even know. Someone remind me how we even got on this topic of me talking about being on some kind of TV show or something. And then I was like, a light bulb reminded me that something did happen at the end of September last year. Um, and the secret is something about a TV show. So I'm going to give you guys a second to, or a few seconds to guess what show I was possibly going to be on. I'll let you guys guess first and then I'll tell you the story. Um, and while you guys are guessing, I'm going to look up this Pinterest link that Barbara just posted. Yes. I've thought about doing that kind of, um, curtain style. Um, the window coverings that I'm making, they're foam board. And then I bought some, it's like Reflectix, but it has more R value, R, like an insulating value. I'm going to glue that on top of the foam board and then I'm going to cover it in material. And then I'm just going to like stick it in there and I might add magnets, but I think they'll stick in there without having magnets. So it's going to take a minute to like cut all the material and glue it all and fit it properly. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm just going to read these. Um, you guys have some good stuff already. Um, should we do like, ah, should we do like a winner? I don't know what I would do. Like there's no like grand prize or anything. You guys have any ideas? Let me, know. okay. So I'm just going to read them off a Ted talk. Target has been pretty awesome for parking. Yes. Wally world sucks. Yes. Uh, Bob's show, I wish. Dr. Phil, wah ha ha Discovery show, MTV Cribs. MTV Cribs. I love it. The Amazing Race, Naked and Afraid. I would never do Naked and Afraid. But that's not it. CBS Sunday Morning, Judge Judy, The Bachelor. These are good ones, you guys. Wheel of Fortune. You weren't on the Brady Bunch. I would have remembered that. Inside Edition. How about a hint? Deal or no deal? Is deal or no deal still on? The price is right. You are good at guessing what things cost. I think I might do well on price is right, but that stresses me out. Um, some great suggestions here. That's true. Running wild with bear grills. Wow, that would be a that'd be crazy. You must have more clues. Yes, the winner gives you $10 super chat. <laughs> uh when bragging. Yeah, you'll get bragging rights. The voice. Oh, thanks, Grant, but that wasn't it. There's a great video on YouTube for window coverings and they are thick with three layers. Wish I knew who it was to link to. Yes. I've probably seen that one. Uh, living small. Haven't watched TV in three years. So I wouldn't, would, uh, wouldn't have a clue. The newlyweds dog and Beth is dog and Beth a thing. I've never heard of that. You weren't in an animated cartoon. Were you? I once was. Oh, that's interesting. Um, Oh, I saw your animated cartoon, Mike. Now that you're, I just remember that you sent it to me. Um, America's Got Talent, uh, The Voice, Orange is the New Black. I think that's over. Game of Games? Is that a thing? Game of Games? Give us the year, Travel Snacks. <laughs> Big Brother, a beauty contest. Hey, from Ireland, just dropping in to say hi. Hope you're well. We, uh, we're all well here. Thank you for coming. Hey, Kamal. Um, Tiny homes, dog and Beth, dog, the bounty hunter, but Beth, Beth passed away. Oh, really? Oh, dang. I did not know that. Um, but no, not, that's not the show. I really want to do the amazing race, except I'm not going to eat bugs or bungee jump or repel. Can't really run due to an artificial ankle. Oh, yeah. 
I wouldn't be very good on Amazing Race, I don't think, because I'm not going to eat gross food. Ridiculousness. Is that still on? 60 days in. Pimp my ride. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Jeopardy. I'll rip for um, Alex Trebek. Uh, side note, somebody mentioned Newlywed Game. And for those of you that don't know, um, when I was first married to my first husband, because I've been married twice, but when I was first married um, with, and I had my son Marcus, who's now 24. So this was years, 24 years ago. Um, I stayed home for the first year uh, of having my son. And I would sit at home doing all the housework and stuff. And then when he'd go to sleep, I would watch TV and I would watch the newlywed game. And so I would be like, oh, I'd be answering all the questions. I'm like, we could win this, we could win this. And so my husband at the time came home and I was like, I would always like grill him on all the questions that they would have that day or whatever. And I'm like, how do you even get on this show? Like they had the thing at the end, like if you're a newlywed, you know, if you'd like to come on the show, then call this number. And so I did. And so we got on the show. It wasn't the newlywed game. It was the new newlywed game with, I forget the host's name. So it wasn't the old one with what Bob Eubanks or whatever. It was the new newlywed game. And so we got on the show and we won. We won a trip to Costa Rica. And so that's not the secret. I'm just telling you a side note. This was back in 2006. And that was the prize, a trip to Costa Rica. And it was fabulous. And I loved it. Um, so let me see. Hey, Chris Ghost Country Life. Welcome. Great to meet you too. With Chuck, oh, Chuck Roller. Yes. No. Yeah, it wasn't. It was the new newlywed game. Side note, still so cool. Yes. That was a long time ago. And like I said, I might at some point in the way future, I might release that video because I looked crazy, crazy. I was wearing like this pantsuit and my hair was like kind of like short with like feathered back. It was like, what was I wearing? What was I doing? It was atrocious. And some of the questions on there were very embarrassing. So that may be a future thing. Um, what a great prize. Yeah, Costa Rica, it was awesome. Rhea thinks it was Carney Wilson. Okay, uh, Travel Channel. Uh, I'm from is it South America, so we're familiar with your TV shows and I didn't know some don't even exist. She was on MTV 2020. You guys have a lot of great um, guesses and they're all varied like variety. Um, okay, so should I, you guys have any more guesses or should I spring the, spring the uh, story on you guys? Oh, South Africa, sorry. Oh, South Africa, oh, awesome. That's a place I'd like to go. Okay. Um, Bring away food show. T Dot's like sticking with the food show. It's not a food show. I wish it was a food show. Um, so this is what happened. So millionaire, spring it, spring it, spring it. Okay, spill the beans. Yeah, with the foam board, you shouldn't need the magnets. I need to make new ones. Okay, awesome. Clue. Um, oh, you guys want a clue, or you want me to spring it? What's your favorite snack? I'll get to snacks in a minute. Road rules. Let's have girl. You're killing me. <laughs> okay. So at the end of September, I'm just working on my van and all of a sudden I get an email from a producer, which the email was the producer's name at cbs.com. And for those of you that aren't in the States, CBS is a major network out here. So at first I was like, this is fake. You know how you get emails and you're like, this is fake. Um, and the email said, Actually, let me pull it up. Now that I might as well just, you know. Oh, hold on a second. I'm getting a donation from Terry. $20. Terry, I'm going to give you a shout out. Thank you so, so much. Oh. Thank you so much, Terry. You are a blessing to me. Okay, sorry, I got sidetracked because Terry's generous donation. Um, okay. Here we go. I'm going to read this email to you guys. 
<laughs> Hurry up. I know I'm I'm totally dragging this out. <laughs> Prince Abubu wants to send you money. Okay. Um, I'm gonna read it, but I'm gonna leave all the names out because you know, I don't know. Um, hi Allison, my name is so and so, and I am from and I'm a producer with the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> So somebody got it. I forget who it was, but it was pretty early on. Who got it? Who got the Dr. Phil show? AJ Williams, you win bragging rights. I know this is so random because Dr. Phil is like, what does that have to do with anything about me and my, and my life, right? So I'm going to continue. Um, yeah, it is crazy. I'm going to let you guys have a reaction. I'm gonna let you guys have a reaction because I got this email and I'm like, low key, first of all, is he still on? Which, sorry, that sounds bad because I don't really, I don't have TV and I don't, this is not something I even know. Um, exactly. What would Dr. V yeah, I don't know. He thinks you're crazy and need help. I mean, honestly, that's probably what's happening. The Rams are winning right now. <laughs> um, Dr. Phil, he's a psychologist. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm telling you, it's crazy. Um, so it says, I hope this finds you well. I'm interested in taping a show about the nomadic lifestyle and wanted to see if you might be interested in sharing your story. If so, I would love to set up a time for a quick call and I can introduce myself, provide the details. Please let me know what works best for you. Hope to speak to you soon. So I'm like, this is fake. You know what I'm saying? Like, First of all, at the time, my channel was, what, in end of September, I think the channel was not even 10,000 subscribers or just at 10,000 subscribers. And I'm like, I mean, this is a good, like, thing to be like, don't ever doubt yourself or doubt what God can do in your life. But also, like, I still was like, okay, why would, you know, there's so many van life people that are doing bigger things. Um, let's see. Uh, Dr. Phil wants to psychoanalyze you. Maybe you should go to Dr. Phil. Honestly, I think he exploits people. Uh, that's dope. I've heard the same. Dr. Phil would never understand. Dr. Phil, so sorry. The other doctor, I had him confused with the pharmacist. Oh, you rat you, rat you out, stupid autocrat. <laughs> Prince Abubu, Dr. Phil is the most calming voice in the world. Don't do it, girl. I know I, it would be... I know it would be a real boost for your channel for a while, but they're looking to kill the nomad. Pew. Um, pig in a poke, the Griswolds. Yes. Okay. So this is what happened. This is the story. Obviously I didn't go on the show. That's the spoiler. Um, so I called my mentor, Rachel Luna. If you guys already aren't already following her, you should be following her. She's on Instagram at girl confident. She's my mentor in business and stuff. Um, I called her cause she's had a lot of stuff like this, you know, media stuff and I'm like first of all do you think this is a real thing and she's like yeah I think it's real um and I would call right away because if people contact you to be on shows um their producers are like scouring and just calling a bunch of people and so I was like okay because this email came in at night it came out came to me like after 6 p.m. And I'm like, that seems fishy. And she's like, no, producers work all crazy hours. And I would definitely call right away to see what they're talking about. So I call this lady and she was like, um, she's like, oh, she's like, I'm on another call right now. Can I call you back in 30 minutes? And so I'm just like, sure. Now, on a side note, I don't get really like super hyped on stuff. Like I'm not starstruck. I'm not. The kind of person that really gets like I mean maybe, maybe there's a few people that I might be like whoa but I feel like we're all just human beings and whatever I don't get like super crazy about stuff so let me read the comments and then I'll keep going with the story I agree Dr. Phil would just be out to make you and all nomads look crazy he does exploit people ask how much you pay in Dr. Oz I'll have to look him up Seattle is the Emerald City and it's only 50 miles away from I'm glad God shut that door Allison maybe the producer contacted a number of car life people to discuss van life it could have been a very positive experience turned you down because they found out you're intelligent 
California is a couple of hours behind. It's also just playing with words. He would not be able to hand, handle your honesty. 6 p.m. would only be 4 p.m. there. Okay, so basically I call her up and she was like, okay, so um, I've been noticing a lot of like people, more people getting into van life and car life and stuff. And I watched your videos and I think they're very interesting and you have a lot of, you know, good things to say. And also I'm um, just really curious to learn more about it personally. And also I want to pitch this to Dr. Phil. So this wasn't a show that was already scheduled. This was a show that she as a producer was trying to suss out to see if it would be a good fit for the show. And she wanted to like talk to a few different people to find out like what, um, you know, what it was all about and how they could build a show around the nomadic lifestyle. And so I shared some things with her about uh, moving from a car and how I was converting into a van. And she was like, that's really interesting. Um, she's like, uh, and also on a side note, I'm I'm with a lot of you guys on the reality shows um, that are like interview shows like Dr. Phil or like, I know it's a different levels, but Jerry Springer and like, um, I don't know all the other ones, but you know what I'm talking about. There's There's different varying levels of these types of shows where they kind of like, they want sensationalism. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm a person that likes to help. So I was giving her a lot of like information, what, um, how it's been for me, what things I could share, blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, is there anybody in your life that, um, would be interested in sharing how they feel about you living a nomadic lifestyle? So right there, I'm like, yeah, I do. But I, I feel I honestly have a feeling that they want people that are in disagreement with you, like that are like, Oh, you're crazy. And I think they want to like, we all know this It's media. They want to have com com like conflicts on TV so that people will watch the show. And so she's like, well, who do you think would want to be on the show with you? And I was like, I mean, my dad's doing the videos with me. So he would definitely do it. My mom probably not. She's not, she doesn't like to be on the videos and stuff. I said, both my sons are YouTubers. And as soon as I said that, she like lit up on the phone and she was like, oh, she's like, that'd be so great. What do they do? What are their channels? And so she's like, do you think they'd be want to be on the show? And I was like, I don't know. I could ask them. I was like, one of them doesn't even live, you know, doesn't even live in California. She's like, oh, like we could um, video conference him in. And I said, well, would this be like a live show? And she's like, yeah, I'd be in studio. And so I was like, even with COVID and stuff. And she's like, yeah, so we have all these protocols in place. Um, but she's like, but first, you know, this is just basically like just to get a fact finding thing to see what we could build a show around. And so she basically said um, that she would like to um, like do some more research and find out. And she would also like to find like talk to the people in my life that would be interested in being on the show with me. And so I said, okay, well, let me talk to my family and then I will let you know by email if they're interested. So my dad said, okay. And my older son said, okay, my younger son didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, so basically she was like, okay, so if you are interested, she's like, it'd be great if you can make like a one minute introduction video so that I could show it to Dr. Phil. And so I was like, what do you want to have on the one minute video? And she said, just basically introduce yourself, you know, what you do in terms of nomadic lifestyle and where you're at and like with the journey and stuff like that. Um, and she's like, and if we end up doing the show, I said, because I'm not in my van right now, <clears throat> my van's not even done. And so she was like, <clears throat> well, what we could do is we'll have a, a film crew come out and we'll film you in a day of the life of you building your van with your dad. And I was like, okay, that's great. So let me read these comments and then I'll, you know, like finish the rest of the story. Okay. Uh, uh, you see, they are trying to destroy van life. Hey, Carmen, how are you? I don't know. After the CBS morning show did a disservice when they interviewed Bob Wells, I am glad for your sake. It didn't happen. You are such a beacon of light. Yes. Um, yay. I made it. Hey, Ink Gypsy. What are you, what your IG I can share a few 
is what I did for camp. Yes, please. Um, my IG is travel snacks underscore. Um, I'm glad you're Carmen. Uh, let's see. Let's see. You are not the father type. -ish. <laughs> no. Hi, a short hello for me. Hey, Armella, how are you? Typical of them. Yes. They want drama. They definitely want drama. Maybe Dr. Phil wants your take on living in a van and homelessness. Maybe. Um, yep. They want a battle. Maury, who's your daddy? True. I don't have any of those situations. So they're barking up the wrong tree. Nah, don't do it. And by the way, does anyone, you know, think they are an alien? <laughs> yes. I totally agree with you, Allison. They're not interested in that way of life. They're looking for conflict drama driven shows. Hello. I am so inspired by your bill. Thank you. Kearney Garlow. Um, oh, I did not know CBS interviewed Bob Wells. I didn't either. Um, hey, Narwin, I have no idea why this was in my recommended. What in the world is that chat? Uh, okay, awesome. Um, okay, so from there, she's like, let me know about, you know, who of your family would be interested. So I talked to my family. Um, and so I sent her an email and I gave her the phone number to my dad and the phone number to my son here, Marcus in Texas. And so she contacted both of them and talked to them. And you guys know me, you know that, and you know my fam, like you know my family enough to know that we're not haters. Like we don't hate on each other and we speak positively and we love God and we love being positive. And so she called my dad and my dad was like, yeah, I'm totally proud of my daughter and like think this is great. And my dad's like, you know, we're doing this van build and I can, you know, give you any, you know, information that you want. And the only thing is I always, you know, worry about my daughter being safe on the road, but that's about it. And so then she called my son and he basically was the same thing. He's like, I'm proud of my mom. You know, I um, would be happy to be on the show and I'm just always, you know, want to make sure that my mom is being safe and that's it. And so she wrote me back and she was like, so your son, your younger son doesn't want to do it. Cause my younger son has a lot of followers. And so I was like, no, he doesn't want to do it. And she, you could tell she, I mean, from, I got the vibe. She was a little bit disappointed because his channel is so big. And I think she wanted him to be on the show and he didn't, he didn't want to. And I'm not going to push my family to be on the show. And so I don't know, like, I'm not going to speak on somebody's state of mind, but I've watched enough TV to know that any reality show is looking for drama they're looking for a show they're looking for something that people will be like oh my gosh or i can't believe that girl did that or oh my gosh they hate each other or their families this this and you know me i would have gone on that show and spoken super positively about nomadic lifestyles and i don't know that if that's what they were looking for i made the one minute video i sent it along and basically in my one minute video i shared my i mean a one minute is really short i i just basically shared you know that um, I wanted to do car life, van life, because I was depressed being in one spot. And I thought that maybe he would be like interested because, you know, he's a psychiatrist or whatever, psychologist. And, you know, talk about talking about like depression, like when people, some people are meant to be nomads, uh, you know, and don't want to be in one spot. And so in the one minute video, I talked about how I was depressed, even when I was living in my best life in Carlsbad and a $3,000 apartment and all these things. And how van life and car life has just been such a blessing to me. And I talked about travel snacks and probably they didn't want to hear about that. They did, probably don't care about my channel or, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I don't know what their motivations are. I'm just telling you like that I would have done the show, but I just, you know, I know what they're basically probably wanting. They probably want something that's more dirty. And I can't speak of that for sure, because basically, um, I sent the one minute video. I, they, she called both my dad and my son, she got all the information and she was like, okay, well, I'm going to do some more research on nomad life and, you know, see if I can even make this into a show and then I'll get back to you. And nothing, nothing. She never got back to me. And at first I was going to reach out and follow up, but I'm like, I mean, am I like, do I really care to go on the show? I mean, you guys know I would do it because I want to spread the good word, you know, about living a life of, like more freely. But I took it as like how a couple of you said is like, God shut that door. It's like, if God wanted me to be on the show, then I feel like it would have happened. And 
I'm going to keep just being myself and sharing good stuff about the snack pack, about travel snacks, about being resourceful and all the things that this, this channel is all about. And I don't know that 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 was going to gel on the Dr. Phil show. And so I'm not sad at all about it. I actually forgot about it until whatever happened last week, it came up for some reason that I was had this opportunity. But the way I took it to kind of wrap this story up is that if that can happen for me with less than 10,000 subscribers, then it can happen for a lot of people. And there can be way more opportunities for this channel to, you know, expose more people to getting to know like about alternative living and how people should be able to live more freely. And I don't like when people try to knock down um, a nomadic lifestyle or any kind of alternative lifestyle that somebody wants to live. So I'm totally fine um, that it didn't happen, but you know, that's what happened. So let me read some of these comments. Um, I was on vacation. Don't do it. Stay true to who you are. Yes. You would have been good on the Bourdain show. Rip. Yeah. Rest in peace. If she would watch the channel, she would know there is no Dr. Phil show there. Yeah. What's your son's channel? My older son's channel, who's in Texas, his channel is Sharp Sports. He talks about football. And my younger son's channel is just called Sharp. S-H-A-R-P-E. He does music. They are trying to scheme. Yes. It's always about the money. Yes. Doctor, let's see. I lost my... Dr. Phil's show seems more of a show that seeks out more negative vibes. You know what's crazy is that might have been a good opportunity to blow your YouTube channel up. It could have. I mean, I, I mean, obviously, like if I go on a national show, um, certainly if they mention Travel Snacks, it's 100% certain that more people will join Travel Snacks. But also, I don't want people to join the channel if they are coming for the wrong reasons, you know what I mean? Or if they're just gonna be trolls and haters. So to me, God supplies and provides for me. So I never put that into to a man's hand. So my channel will blow up if it's supposed to blow up. And I feel that with our community, I think it's going to do well no matter what, because we're all here together. So I think that's this is gonna happen no matter what. You're a wholesome family, don't ever change. We love you for who you are, thank you. That producer wanted conflict to draw in viewers. You could not and would not provide conflict. Wasn't going to. Um, they would talk about your pre forever and have a whole nation full of misinformation. Yes, that's true too. I came in late, however, what show are you talking about? Uh, Yasmin, I was talking about Dr. Phil show. Um, wow, 2,400 people watching. No, <laughs> I had to look over. I was like, what? Um, uh, no follow-up needed. They, yeah, no follow-up needed. They wanted something sensationalist. Yes, I agree. I think they definitely did. I, you know, I could appreciate that maybe she wanted to do a show about the nomadic lifestyle, but I don't think it was like sunshine and candy canes, like, oh, nomadic lifestyle is great and perfect and everything. I think they wanted to have a family on there that's like, you're stupid and you live in the van by the river. Like, you know, I think they wanted that sort of thing. I'm, I'm just, I'm not saying anything against anybody because I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just saying that a lot of the shows, they want, they want that. They want fights. Um, that, that builds pride to dangerously. Yes. You better off getting a call from TLC. Yes. Um, Gina, thank you so much. Thank you for the $10. That's very, very awesome and generous, and I truly appreciate you. Let's see. Let's give you, oh, let's give you an applause. Party horn, and thank you so much, Gina. I truly appreciate it, and uh, thank you for your nice message as well. Um, bye, Armella, Jeannie. Robert Austin, you are over 10K and growing. Congrats to you. Thank you so much. 
from Oklahoma. Awesome. So far, you have a great channel. Thank you very much. Can you imagine poor Grant would throw on his wrench with all the haters? Oh, man. Yes. Yeah, that's another thing. Thank you, Grant, for posting the the link. Yes, that I would. I don't want a bunch of crazy haters like that want like that want to watch fights and stuff like that. I don't. I'm not into that. Living in a van down by the river. Yes, they probably would have turned it on you and how your lifestyle is affecting your children. True. Nothing wrong with living by a river. Also true. <laughs> Rhea says they wanted viewers to say, "Wow, what a messed up family." Thank God we're not them. That's true too. Like. Could you imagine like people sitting in their rocking chairs at home just being like judgy and being like, oh my gosh, what trash to live in a van or live in a car. You know, she's just out here doing, excuse me, ambulance that's going to try to save somebody. I'm trying to have a live stream here, but also I pray for healing for whoever is going through something. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, you know, people can be very judgy about different lifestyles and yeah, I don't know as long as it's legal. What's the name of your sound effects app? The sound effects app is called, it's a long name, it's called Hundreds of Buttons and Sounds. <laughs> That's the name of the app, Hundreds of Buttons and Sounds. Um, poor kids, yeah. I'd be putting Dr. Phil on the timeout, probably. What happened to the gener, what happened to this generation? Yes, exactly. I already read it in my comments. I'm sure if you guys um, read some of the comments that come through on my videos, it actually kind of tickles me when I see the comments that are like, this America has gone to trash. This is what my forefathers just didn't work for, blah, blah. It's like, I think people are very set in their ways and they can't understand that some people want to live like this. Somebody posted a comment the other day that was talking about how um, they were like, you, you're not homeless. You just think that everybody that's homeless living in a car could afford these things that you're talking about and I'm like I never said I was homeless bro like I'm choosing to do this um do I want to, to help in some way with the homeless problem yes I don't know how yet maybe God will guide me in that direction but like it's funny that people are so quick to point a finger and you know in a sense I'm like glad that I didn't get to go on that show because it's like I don't want people just pointing fingers just for no reason it's like I want to highlight the good but I don't think it would have turned out that way um, and anything that I put like my efforts into, I am going to speak positively. So I don't know. Um, Allison, could you handle fame? I mean, what if you had 40 million subscribers? Could you handle that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like to me, f like I put the same effort into four subscribers as 40 million subscribers. And to me, it's just numbers. And I don't, I don't, it, it's just whatever. Um, I think the problem comes in is that when you have 40 million subscribers, which is great, it's like a lot gets lost in translation because you lose out on that small community feel. And so I, of course, want my channel to grow, but also I love being able to have these chats and stuff. And so far I'm able to get to most of the chats, you know? And so I think it's, it's not that I even, to me, I don't look at it as fame. I don't even think it's fame. To me, I just think it's like a community of people sharing with one another. So I don't know. I already got to go to work at 4 a.m. Oh, dang. Good night. Love your videos. Thank you so much. Thankful you didn't do the show. It would be exhausting removing all the haters that would show up afterwards. That's true. I would have to get like a couple more moderators because as great as you are, Grant, I think it'd be nuts. You must delete those comments. I've never, I've never seen those. Oh yeah, I, I get all the crazy comments. God indeed will lead you. That's for sure. No, I mean, could you handle everyone knowing you are, you on the street? You couldn't eat anywhere. Oh dang, that would suck. I've only gotten noticed like one or two times so far. <laughs> um, I don't want fame. I don't want fame. I don't want that lifestyle. I, I think that's why I enjoy YouTube because you could be. YouTube famous and still nobody really knows you. You might get noticed a few times, but it, I don't think it's like the Kardashian level, you know? I don't mind having a little bit of, you know, people coming up and stuff. Cause I like to, you know, to share like positivity, but yeah, I wouldn't want to get to that level where I couldn't eat. 
That would suck. Um, don't forget me. No, I'm not going to forget any of the snack pack people. 40 million subscribers. Oh my God, I'm threading that day. <laughs> Poor Grant. He's going to have to like start day drinking or something. The critics are probably uh, property owners who can't rent their overly expensive apartments because so many people are choosing van life. That's a good point, Jane. That's a good point. Chris says, that's me. I don't want strangers recognizing me. Yeah, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that. All right. So we had a long chat and are you guys hanging in there? Because I have, um, I have a, a couple questions if you guys want to play a quick game. Um, or we've already had a lot of excitement, so we could end now. So it's up to you. I know we started off where the live stream was going for already like 30 minutes. And so we're already going on like over two hours. So it's up to you guys. Um, are you shy when people notice you? I'm not shy, I don't think. I'm... I think it's sweet. I think it's very endearing when people are like, oh, travel smack smacks. I've said that twice now. Um, one guy recognized me when I was in the airport and that was when I had a very small channel. And then um, I forget somebody else recognized me somewhere else, which I can't remember. But I was like, oh, hey, like, you know, I'm just like a friendly person, you know, so I don't think I'm very shy. Funny, I just thought I just had a thought that if I randomly saw you, I'd be like, Allison, you look at me like, who is this? It's T dot. I would know your, yeah, you guys would have to say your screen names. Um, and it's funny because I also respond to travel snacks for some reason. Like some of my friends would be like, hey, travel snacks, or I've seen some of you say snacks. I think if somebody was like, travel snacks, I'd probably turn around. So I would not be offended if someone was like, you know, hey, travel snacks, because I don't usually say my name when I start the live streams and I don't say my name in the videos. I just put the, the thing in the, like the little graphic. So some people might not even know my name, which is kind of funny. 65 people hanging. Awesome. Quick game. Let's do this. Game time. Ask questions. Game. Okay. I'm still here. Up to you. Oh, I'm glad. I'm happy to do it. Due to the airport, probably a stalker. Probably. Hey, Karina, how are you? We're just about to start a game. Okay, so this is what I thought we would do because some of you still like the Would You Rather game and some of you like the new game that we started last week, which is like a, a what if question. Um, <laughs> so I thought what we would do is every week we'll do one like what if question and one what would you rather question. That way we can play both games and it probably won't take that long. Um, and that way we'll get the best of both worlds. And then plus I won't have to come up with so many um, would you rather questions and we'll pace them out. So um, let's do the, the um, what if question first. And this is not really a what if question, but it's like a thought topic, if that makes sense. And I'd like to hear what you guys think about this. Um, okay. What do you personally think the line is between art and not art? So you guys have all seen, you've I'm sure been to an art gallery or a museum or you've seen it on TV where somebody's an artist. And sometimes you'll see art and it's like just squiggly lines or like, somebody has thrown paint on a canvas and they're like, this is art or they make art with trash or whatever. And what is the line between something being art? Like if I take my pad of paper and I scribble some things and I'm like, this is art, pay me a million dollars. Is it art or is it not art? And where is the line between art? I would like to know what you guys think. What's the line? Here we go. And hello, Happy. <laughs> if it looks like my granddaughter did it, it's not art. <laughs> That's a good start to this, this question game. Art, Michelangelo, not art, Picasso. Oh, interesting. I wanna know why you think this. Art is something I can't do. <laughs> Yasmin, I think art is like beauty. It is in the eye of the beholder. Jen L, I think that line is subjective. 
Um, Gina says, got to tell what it is. Okay, so art, in your opinion, is you have to be able to distinguish. So what about like abstract art? Is abstract art not art? What do you think? By the way, I am an artist. Oh, okay, Barbara, this is a good topic for you. The line is in each person's mind. That's a good one. If I can do it, not art. Okay. Art is always subjective. A piece always speaks to different people. That's true too. Art is in the eye of the one that likes it. True. That's subjective. There really is no right answer. Personally, I am good with anything that isn't obscene. Okay. Uh, yes, that's a great answer, Yasmin. Um, or a blank canvas, canvas, whitewashed, and someone calls it art. I don't get it. Exactly. Abstract is doodling. Um, I know we learned something about Barbara today. Art can be anything. If your name is well known, anything you do can be art. That's true. Uh, in the eye of the beholder, also true. And hello, Rita. Art is subjective. That is a good question. I wonder that all the time. You are art, Allison. Game. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you win points. No. Um, so to put this question a little bit further, um, because so a lot of you are saying that it's subjective and art is in the eye of the beholder. So what makes certain art, how do I say this? What makes certain art more pricey? Like you see some people, even some beginners that rise up quickly in the artistry world and they start getting paid like all this money or even a little bit of money. Like what determines if somebody gets on an art gallery wall? Is it just the curator or whatever they call it that's like their eye, their subjective eye? Or is it, does it come out to be like marketing or like what people think? Um, because you see, I'm sure you guys have seen where it's like if somebody perceives somebody to be famous, then they'll pay money for it, even if that person was not famous. So what do you guys think? Like what makes art worth something worth paying for? Um, let's see. I would like to say none. However, a blank canvas sold for the ridiculous amount. I drew my line there. It had to inspire for me. Okay. That's true. Um, before I was saved in Christ Jesus, I used to draw Gothic death characters. Dang, that's dark. Uh, so demand. Okay, hold on a second because, oh shoot, you guys. Okay, can you guys entertain yourselves for like two and a half minutes or whatever? Because I got to go get my, my computer charger because it's about to die. And it's in the van. Okay, so talk amongst yourselves real quick. Grant, tell a joke. I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, it's so cold outside. <laughs> Hold on a second. Got to untangle. Yeesh. Saved. Okay. 
That was a close call. <sighs> okay. There's a family around here that glued baby doll head heads, arms, and legs all over their car and drive it. It's scary. No, that's gross. Artist is dead. So that's, yeah, then it's worth a lot of money when an artist dies. But not all artists. So that's what's weird about it. I'm breathing heavy because I run down those stairs. But you still have a talent to draw other things, something I could never do. Yes, the death of an artist. I have no idea and often wondered what the heck. Demand and trend. Crayons aren't just for kids. They don't taste like Skittles, just in case any of you snack packers were wanting to eat crayons. Don't eat crayons. Had a t-shirt company. Oh, wanted to purchase most of my portfolio, but they tried, they tried a package deal. Not going to happen. Oh, dang. I think it's about who you know like anything else. True. Have you traveled on the Greyhound bus before? Um, I don't think I've traveled on a Greyhound bus before. Put a, I've traveled on other buses in other countries, but not, I don't think it's the Greyhound. Put a high price tag on it and some people will buy anything. That's true. You just never know. I cannot draw realistic themes. Oh, interesting. I don't really know that much about art, even though I love crafts. However, I would think it's up to the C person. Oh, the curator at the gallery. Glasses on the floor in the corner is not art. I don't know if Anna remembers that. I don't think I remember that. That's interesting. Connections get you in the gallery, but then you have to deliver the goods, okay? That's like music too. Jonathan, I worked for Greyhound prior to the COVID shutdowns. Yeah, I can, but not for longer than 2.5 minutes. Hello everyone. Hey. Um, how fast is the nomad lady? Are you talking about me <laughs> or somebody else? Tell us a joke about, oh, is that a joke? Okay, hold on. Run, Allie, run, okay. Um, tell us a joke about cornbread grant. Cornbread sounds delicious right now. I guess the more the art gets people talking and the art that catches your eye and the skill technique though the artist uses determines amount, that's true. Curator is also a salesperson looking to get money into the gallery as well as wanting to be involved in the art world. True. Leaving your own live stream. Now that is keeping it real. <laughs> True. And hey, Tina. Um, I have a joke. Knock, knock. Let me scroll down. Oh, well, maybe. I don't think you finished the knock, knock joke. Um, I'm getting an art degree, and I've been told your success is sometimes connected to who you know. That's true. Dwayne says, who's there? What's the best thing about Switzerland? Cornbread or grits? Choose wisely. Both are corny, but in good ways. <laughs> Grant, are you okay? I hope she doesn't lock herself out of the bar. I thought about that too, Jane. I was like, I hope I have the keys, because that would suck. Who's there? Artists who are deemed collectible is when the big bucks come into play. That's true. Snow tomorrow. <laughs> what's what is the best thing yes in texas is it a cheese grant I, i'm getting it all confused so i don't know if the joke's been answered i don't know but the flag is a big plus oh that's funny but not chink that's the like drum sound uh i so so art to me is in the flow of the fabric Ooh, nice I hear the same thing. I recently graduated and people are telling me a lot of times it's not what you know. It's who, I think that's the name of the game with anything is like, it's really connections. I think every career is dependent on who you know. That's why I encourage all kids starting out to network, network, network. True. I wouldn't pay big money to hang something on a wall, but if I can wear it now that now the dollar's low. Yes. Art is like good or bad wine. You instinctively know the difference. Interesting T dot. Art to me is like creative, not art, is like that sex in the city episode where the woman stayed up all night in the gallery. Mm -hmm. I don't know that episode. My favorite artist is Patrick Nagel. You'll recognize his art from the 80s work. I think I know what you're talking about. I've done some abstract. My picture is still hanging up in my old high school, so they say it was a Ferrari. Ooh, interesting. Okay, Lady J, let's put your favorite snacks on a canvas. Let's give it a go. <laughs> 
have a good night, everyone. Safe travels. Out. Thank you so much, Jan, for being here. It's a way for the rich to avoid paying taxes. Also true. Art is worth what the person looking at it gives it. That's true. I think there's a lot underground going along with, like you said, about rich people and trading and like investing and stuff. But I think like to me, art should be about skill. Um, and of course, you know, art is subjective. Like I could sit up here and just splatter some paint and like really be in my feels about it and like really be like invested into the art. And to me, it could be art. I'm creating art like through my own being, but it may not be art to somebody else. When they look at it, they might be like, I'm not in my fields looking at it. So it's not art. So I think it really does come down to who is viewing the art and who is doing the art. And then the next layer is the business side of art. Because also it's just like music. Like you could be the best singer ever and they might not want your brand of singing. They might not want um, that style or it's been played out. Like somebody's voice sounds too similar. And there could be somebody that's just like, eh, but they have like that flair or that like it factor. And somebody might consider that art. And some people have like, like high pitched weird voices. And sometimes it just, it's like a tone that's like different. And somebody might be like, that's art. Um, or like, even if you think about somebody like Prince, how he was just like, had some weird stuff going on, but it worked. So some people are like, artists before their time, that's what they say, but it's just their, their version of creativity, the way they hear something or the way they see something. So I think it really depends on the creator and the one that's viewing the creation. And so that's my take on what's the line between art. I think it is a personal thing. And then you have to add business to it. And that's a different thing than art. That's the business of selling what somebody would deem as art. So that's my opinion. Like I could do a Pollock any day. Yeah. The funniest thing, Allison, is when you left the room and told Grant to tell a joke, there was an immediate, oh my God, pose from Grant. I was on the floor. That is funny. He's like, I'm on the spot now. <laughs> I think with art, if you find a niche that gets it, then you'll make money. That's true. I hate when cords get in the nest. So annoying. Mm -mm -mm. I, I, it should be about details as well. However, I think random lines or splatters or color can make it art as well. Yeah. I think there's some art that's messy that could be art, but I think, I think somebody said it, I'm sorry, but I think you have to feel something. I think when you look at it, it has to speak to you personally. Like it could be some crazy abstract thing, but if I look at it and I'm like, my heart melts looking at this. I need to have this art for whatever, whatever reason, then it could be art to you, but it may not be art to anybody else. I have not drawn since becoming born again. And now when I see realistic paintings, now I am put to shame at the real talents of those real artists. Oh, dang. Uh, you're amazing. God bless you and hope you all stay safe. God bless. Thank you, Scrappy D. God bless you too. Exactly. I couldn't imagine Frank Sinatra singing a rap song. That would be like a nice remix though, I think. Uh, T dot action tells action tell that to all those people that thought the glasses were art. I don't know what glass these glasses are, but I think I know what, I think I know what you're trying to say. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Prince was just blown up by the media. He was good, but I do love Prince. Like I think he had a lot going on. Um, and I like a lot of Prince songs, so I don't know. I do. I really enjoy Prince's music, but I will, you know, just like with any artist that's made it really big, like to me, like Madonna, she's like an icon. I never really saw it. I don't, I never saw like her talent being so wonderful that she was one of the top people in the whole world, but some people do. Some people were just like mesmerized by her. So a lot of it has to do with media and um, marketing and promoting and stuff like that. Denzel Washington is God's greatest human art creation. 
Oh man, that's funny. He's a hottie, but he's not my favorite hottie of like an actor. Um, Gangsters in the Night. <laughs> that's a twist. Funny art isn't as important nowadays because everyone's ever yeah everyone copies other artists work and the advent of computer graphics nothing beats the classic bas basquiat basquiat and picasso sorry i've totally just butchered that basquiat frank sinatra has been dead for a while he was the biggest recording star of his time true headed to discord nightly golf game with buddies fix and star oh awesome have fun if I painted something, it wouldn't be valuable. But if Tom Brady or someone famous signed it, then it would be valuable. That's a good point, Felicity. Because it has somebody's name on it, which I don't really agree with that whole thing either. I had a secret crush on Prince. That boy was so sexy. You know what's funny? Like Prince is like very short and scrawny and weird looking, but like also he had that like little like sex appeal. And I've heard that from a lot of people. Like people were like, He's got like this little feminine flair, but also just like so manly at the same time. Um, he was an interesting person. Yeah, I could see how people could kind of go that direction. Like 60 or 70 years old. Oh, good grief, Grant. He was the fourth one to song New York, New York. First one to sing New York. Okay, whom is <laughs> Veronica? Maybe that's going to be for next <laughs> next week who's my um crushes um but this channel is not really about the romance um we will admit art more since this national sporadic lockdowns yeah admire art more yes it's the way he moved he flowed like fabric oh so that kind of goes into your you know line of what you what your art is all right so have we talked about this art thing and i do have one would you rather question um which will probably be, you know, fairly quick. But if anybody has anything else to say about what they think art is and what art is not, I think there was a lot of good discussion about this because, you know, if you think about art, like I'm sure you've all seen these art galleries though, that's like you look and it's just like weird stuff and you're like, so you just took a McDonald's trash wrapper and wrapped it around like, a shopping cart and then put like a Twix bar in the center. And I'm thinking about food clearly. And then also you put like a Dr. Pepper bottle cap. It's like, is that art? I don't know. I don't think so. But then again, people might be like putting like welding and doing all these other things that take some skill. So I don't know. I think I appreciate art more when somebody's put a little effort into it. Uh, when had when he had the butt out pants, I was done with Prince. <laughs> Food and romance are often tied together. It's so true, so true. I think Prince was reportedly a very generous person. Oh, that's nice to hear. Someone dropped glasses in an art gallery, and everyone thought it was a piece. Oh, an art piece, and were fascinated by the glasses on the floor. Oh, geez. Are you talking about like? Drinking glasses or like glasses? That's crazy. That I like that reminds me of um the um was it King Midas and his was it King Midas with the golden touch where or no was it who was the king that like that thought he was wearing like the golden robes, but he really wasn't. He was just walking naked and people were like, oh, his robes are so lovely. And everyone was just like, so like fake. I hate that. That reminds me of that story. Unexpected company has arrived. See you, next, see you next week, Mimi. Thanks for being here. By the way, what is the name of the van? I don't know. It hasn't come to me yet. I sometimes lay up there at night and I'm like, what's your name, Van? What is your name? But I don't know yet. Oh, seeing glasses, really? That makes it even worse. I could see if you dropped like a glass and it shattered and maybe the light hit it and it was possibly art. But seeing glasses, no, that's upsetting. The Emperor's New Robes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. The Emperor's New Clothes, one of my favorites, yes. That story is like so telling, especially like the way that our 
just ugh, our world is so crazy when people are like, oh, oh, that's just so awesome. And you're like, is everybody seeing what I'm seeing? That's that's the story of the century. Um, snack wagon, yes. Except the little boy who pointed out that he was naked. Exactly. He was the only honest one. Okay, let's move on to the uh, would you rather question. And then we're going to wrap it up because we're all just been on here for a long time. Okay, so this is same in the same vein as art. So would you rather, okay, and also when you say this, put out one of your favorite songs. Would you rather sing your favorite song in a like a football arena or stadium or in front of the artist that sings that song? So you either have to sing your favorite song to like, like, Hundreds of thousands of people. Is a stadium hundreds of thousands or is it thousands? I don't know. Basically a lot of people or just one, just the artist who sings that song. Which one would you rather? Um, I can't front. I would love to hang out with Prince because he had all the honeys around him. I'd be his run interference friend. <laughs> hey, thanks for keeping it real. Bye, Jane. Have a great evening. Grant says neither actually wait. Okay, so, uh, oh, Jacob. So you'd rather sing in front of the artist who sings it. And what is you guys' favorite songs? Uh, Mike says in a stadium right now, stadiums are empty, fans are virtual. No, it, this is like it, if the stadium was packed. This question is old, like if the stadium was packed. So you have to sing in front of so many people or just the artist who like actually sings the song. Okay, um, my singing scares little children and makes dogs howl. I'll read a, I'm sure not. I would sing in front of my favorite artist because I would get to meet them. Ooh, that's a good point I didn't think of. Hallelujah by, oh, by Leonard Cohen. I'd sing it for Leonard. Oh, that is amazing. What a beautiful song. Who is my favorite actor? Ooh, that's a good question. Maybe we'll talk about favorite actors and hotties next Saturday. Um, none can't sing uh, Barbara Streisand will kill me. Oh, I love Barbara Streisand. Um, the artist, but I can't pick a favorite 80s song. Okay, okay. So many, but how about friends in low places in front of Garth Brooks so that I can meet him? My singing is awful either way. Oh, awesome. Monique says, the artist. Jesus, take the wheel by Carrie. Oh, that's a good song. But I have too many favorite songs to name one, yes. Nerp, not singing, but if I could sing, it would be Stevie Nicks, Edge of 17. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, both would be terrifying. Talk to you later. Have to get the kitties ready for bed. Thanks for coming on, Yasmin. In front of the artist, they would then know they have job security. <laughs> That's a good one. Being committed to singing in a stadium, I would sing a hymn to Jesus. Oh, that's beautiful. Leonard Cohen was a fellow mantra. Oh, I did not know that. Awesome. I'd sing in front of all the people because I am at Leo and I think that I'm important. Little do I know. Um, Felicity, Cher would love to hear me sing Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves, I'm sure. Awesome. That's awesome, Mike. Favorite song, The Prayer. Oh, gosh, I love that song. I love to sing, but the moment someone comes around, my throat tightens up and I nearly choke. Oh, but Nora Jones, if I was going to sing. Oh, that's awesome. Would love to meet Shaka Khan. Ooh, that would be awesome. <clears throat> yeah, Stevie Nicks is awesome, too. So right now we have most of you that would rather sing in front of your favorite or sing in front of the artist that naturally sings that song. Um, what would I choose? <sighs> this is a hard one because here's my thought process. I feel like I would not want to like be scrutinized by the artist that naturally sings it because I'm sure that they sing it a million times better than I would ever sing the song. But, so that's why I wanna choose just to sing in front of a stadium so that I wouldn't have to be under the pressure. But now you guys have changed my mind because then I could meet my 
like favorite artist and sing in front of them and then we could become best friends. <laughs> See, Allison, Allison, bye T-Dot. This is a list of good artists and songs. Yes, Freddie Mercury. Oh, so you can't sing in front of, this would be like if you could sing in front of dead artists, but that sounds weird. My Chihuahua hide under the bed when I <laughs> inspired by Whitney. Oh no, that's funny. I think you're, I think you guys have changed my mind. My answer was going to be to sing in front of a stadium. So I wouldn't have to be like, you know, singing in front of my favorite artists. But now I think I'm going to change it to singing in front of the artist. Um, yeah, they would be nice and just smile. Yeah, we could be best friends. <laughs> hey, what's up from Nashville? Hey, Kenny, how are you? Allison, sing something from your CD. No, I'm not going to be singing today. That might be another future thing that I do, but it won't be today. Hi, I missed it all. Oh, it's okay. You can watch the replay, Terry. Terry is tenacious. Um, all right, so let's see. And I, I can't really narrow down a favorite song, but my favorite, like one of my favorite artists of all time is Stokely from Mint Condition, which if you don't know that, it's the 90s group. I know it sounds random, but I love his voice so much. And he would be like, I've already met him before, but that's why I'm saying I'd be so terrified to sing in front of him because he's just such a magnificent vocalist. Um, but if I could hang out with him, I would, I think that'd be super cool. Um, rock and roll heaven has a hell of a band. <laughs> yeah. In front of a mirror, you would be singing in front of the artist of your own CD. Oh, thank you. I also like two black Cadillacs. I don't think I know that one. Be great. What was the secret? Oh, the secret was that I was uh, asked to be on the Dr. Phil show, which I did not go on because it just fizzled out. Oh, I still don't have one of your CDs. Going to PayPal you some money and an address. Oh, awesome. I just sent um, Chef Life Van Life, who's Kendra. Um, she paid for a CD like a while back, like right at the like, hardest week of the van build. And I was like, I'm going to have to get it out to you when I get a chance. So I just sent it to her. So this is a good time. If anybody, I only have a few CDs with me on the road. So if you ever, if you guys want one, they're dwindling. New album, Van Tunes by Allison. That'd be pretty fun. Maybe I'll add that to my merch collection. I'm going to write that down. It would be like, probably be a funny spoof CD. Van sounds. Van Tunes. That's a good, you guys have such great ideas. I write down like almost everything you guys tell me because I think it's it's fun. Um, Veronica, my chihuahua would just look at me panting, uh, panting her head like, what's that? Oh, I already have a playlist for my death. My children think I'm crazy. I, I for a long time, I had the song I wanted played at my funeral too. So I don't think it's crazy. Oh, you lost signal. Um, if you guys want a CD, like I said, I only have a few, so, um, and I'm not going to take them all in my van. I'm leaving them here at my son's house. Um, but just to cover the costs of mailing it, basically, um, if you're in the U S $5 and if you're somewhere else, $10, because I don't know all the like costs of posting something to other countries. So I don't know. Um, but I think it was like, three or four dollars to send the CD and then like a dollar for the envelope or whatever. So it's not making money over here, but, but um, I do have a few CDs that I could send. Um, any George Michael song too bad. I would have loved to sing with all oh, in front of him is the answer. Oh, awesome. He had some good music, wonderful music. Fake freedom could do the cover art. Ooh, uh, this is a collective. I love this idea, Terry. We should do like a, a snack pack collective why don't we do it in the road by the beatles i don't think i know that is that something you're making up for funsies hey dr mango how are you how do i send you the money for the cd um you could just if you have paypal you could just paypal it but make sure that you put in the note for a cd because sometimes i get snack fun donations and I don't know if it's for the CD or just a donation. Um, so just put in the notes that it's for a CD and then I'll mail it off. Um, cross town traffic. 
Oh, Jimmy Hendrix. Okay, so I see what you're doing. <laughs> I would love to sing Little Girl by John Michael Montgomery. Two black catalogs. Is a oh, okay. I'm not a big country fan, so I don't know a lot of country music. Not that I don't. Like, I like some country, but I'm just, that's not my favorite music. There are actually international mailing laws for CDs, but you are the artist, so it should be. An oh, okay. I didn't know that. Like, I could do, like, media mail for U.S., but I don't know about, like, international. I am perfect and pleasant. How do you feel? I feel great. It's a real song, but it doesn't get that much. Oh, okay. That's a real Beatles song. I did not know that. All right. Awesome. Well, you guys have given me a lot of information tonight about my gas tank and the thing to fix my cabinet. And you guys got a big secret that I just was holding on to and just remembered. Um, uh, are you asking me for the PayPal link? Hold on. Let me get it. Let me get the PayPal link. Um, okay, that's the PayPal link. If you guys want a CD, um, that's just make sure you put it in the note that you're that you want a CD, and then I will get those all out into the mail. Did I miss question number two? I had to step away for that. Yeah, we already did it and we're wrapping up, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right, so we've been on for a long time. Thank you guys for sticking with me tonight. Thank you for uh, being patient and just allowing me to try new things. Um, I'm gonna work it out to get a better live stream situation so I could do it in the van. I think I'm gonna be switching back to Verizon this week and I might get a hotspot from AT&T too, but I'll keep you guys posted. But I might do the same thing next week where I start in my van and be in the parking lot with my son's place just in case. Um, so yeah. So thank you guys for being here. And um, yes, would you rather sing it for the studio? Okay. Have a wonderful week. Have a blessed week. Uh, be kind to one another. There's a lot going on. Um, I'll be praying for all of you. Pray for me and God bless you all and have a wonderful week. And until next time, Bye for now. Thanks, everybody.